Zembola Ahmed Tinibu appoints special investigator to prove the Central Bank of Nigeria and key government business entities. Vice President Shatima says Tinibu will complete Ajakuta Steel Complex and the Aluminium Smeta Company of Nigeria. Ask on. Ukraine's President Zelensky says war is coming back to Russia after a drone attack on Moscow. In sports, Super Flacons true to knockout stage the ongoing FIFA Women's World Cup. This is the MLC TV Global News reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the complaint state of Nigeria. I am Joy Moses. Thanks for joining us. President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has appointed a special investigator to prove the Central Bank of Nigeria and key government business entities. This is coming as a suspended governor of the Appers Bank, Godwin Emefele, is being detained at the office of the DSS. In a letter obtained by journalist, President Tinibu named the Chief Executive Officer Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Jim Osawande Obaze, as Special Investigator of the CBM Bank. Tinibu also directed Obaze to report directly to his office. The statement stated that he is to investigate the CBN and related entities using a suitably experienced, competent and capable team and work with relevant security and anti-corruption agencies to deliver on this assignment. In response to the coup attempt in the Republic of Niger, the heads of state and government of the Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, has called for the immediate release and reinstatement of President Mohamed Bazoum as the legitimate head of state and government of the Republic of Niger. In a communique at the end of the extraordinary summit at on social political situation in the Republic of Niger, read by the President, ECOWAS Commission, Dr. Omar Toure, the leaders also rejected any forms of purported resignation by President Bazoum and declared him as the only recognized and elected president by ECOWAS, the African Union, and the international community. They demanded full restoration of constitutional order in the Republic of Niger and considered the illegal detention of President Mohamed Bazoum as a hostage situation, holding the authors of the attempted coup d'etat solely and fully responsible for his safety and security and that of his family in government. If ECOWAS demands are not met within a week, the leaders said they would take all measures necessary to restore constitutional order in the Republic of Niger. Nigeria's President Bola Tidibu, who hosted the summit in his capacity as a chairperson of the ECOWAS Authority of Head of State and Government in a statement by Special Advice on Special Duties, Communication and Strategy, Dele Alake, explained that the leaders also agreed to appoint and dispatch a special representative to deliver the demands of the authority. Among others, the ECOWAS leaders also condemned the procurement of support by foreign governments and foreign private military contractors while expressing appreciation to various governments and partners for their stance and solidarity. Vice President Kashim Chetima has said in his attendance at the African-Russia summit is to pursue the completion of the Ajakuta Steel Complex and re revival of the Aluminium Smelter Company of Nigeria as gone. He said this in St. Petersburg at a forum with members of the Nigeria community in Russia. The Vice President assured the Nigeria community in Russia that the country under the administration of President Bola Tinibu would work again. Chetima said, be rest assured that in the next 9 to 12 months, there will be a swift change in the fortunes of Nigeria. He emphasized that the administration was committed to repositioning the economy, adding that they were there for the African-Russian summit, but also they were there fundamentally to pursue the completion of the Ajakuta Steel Complex and revival of the Aluminium Smelter Company of Nigeria at SCON. Present at the forum were Nigerian ambassador to Russia, Shehu Abdullahi, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Gabriel Aduda, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, Mary Ogwe, President of the Nigeria Community in Russia, Dr. Maurice Okoli, and the Chairman of Nigeria in Diaspora, Russia, Samson Uwem, among others. The Nigerian Labor Congress has commenced mass
mission ahead of its planned nationwide strike scheduled to begin Wednesday to protest the hardship occasioned by the forest subsidy removal. In a schedule to journalists in Abuja, the NLC urged Nigerians to join them at the Unity Front in Abuja on Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023 at 7 a.m. The NLC said there is nowhere in the world where government leaves its citizens totally to the vagaries of the market without some measure of control and protection. The federal government should immediately deal decisively with the criminal content of subsidy instead of exposing ordinary citizens to avoidable pain and hardship. Speaking further, NLC said, as a matter of national importance, it is imperative to fix all refineries to be able to cater for domestic fuel consumption. Insisting on its demand, the union reiterated the need for the government to immediately reverse all anti-poor policies and release the weighted salaries of the academic staff union of universities, among others. Ahead of its meeting with the federal government and the nationwide strike scheduled to begin on Wednesday, the NLC said the tenable led administration was playing games with the lives of Nigerians. Fathers has been advised to serve as model and exemplary leaders to their children and other family members. The pastor of the Destiny Way International Churches and Revival House Church Lokoja made the call in an interview after their church services in Lokoja. The resident pastor of the Rebuilders House Global Ministry, T.R.H. Lokoja, and the general overseer of the Zion Hill Church of All Nations in Ajakuta also described gratitude and prayer as important tools for receiving more from God and easy way out of worry. Joshua Adenoy has the detail. It was a moment filled with the literal presence of God as Christians at the various churches took out time to sing unto God Most High. Pastor Sam Onu of the Destiny Way International Churches and the Senior Pastor of the Revival House Church, Lokoja, Dr. Halidu Abraham both said the role of parents in child's upbringing is critical, calling on fathers to always live up to expectations in the discharge of their duties. Parents, you need to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. Stand for righteousness. Stand for God. Be godly minded. A father is the greatest support of his family. This support includes a lot of sacrifices. The quality of every family is usually determined by the quality of sacrifice a father is ready to pay for that particular family. The resident pastor of the Rebuilder South Global Ministry, TRH, Lakoja, Minister Roya Abba, and the General Overseer of the Zion Hills Church of All Nations, Ajakuta, Dr. Kola Wole Adebisi, spoke extensively on the dangers of ingratitude and the need for Christians to channel their issues to God in prayers and continuous declaration of God's promises. I want to say he resists the proud and will give grace to the humble. That means for a grateful person, God will eventually elevate the person. So the danger of not being grateful is that now we express a demotion when ought to be expressing a promotion. So whether it's good, whether it's bad, whatever it is, you must continually give God thanks. Why? The Bible said we know all things work together for good for them that love God. The things you worry about may cause you high blood pressure. Why not give your body to Christ? Pray about them. Renew your hope. Sitting down, thinking will only pollute your mind. Will only cause depression and frustration. So you don't need to worry. Worry can affect your health. It can give you migraine headache. It can cause high blood pressure. You need to just pray more and have more faith. Prophesy to your life. Make decree and declaration and good, good confession. This is what can bring peace for you. While the ministers pray for more of God's peace over the state, they also enjoined the citizens to remain law-abiding in all their activities. <laughs> I am Joshua Adenoy, reporting for MLC TV. On politics, 
The former appointees of the former governor, Idris Wada, led by the former commissioner of local government and chief Tanzi affairs, Abubakar Sadiq Amoko, paid a courtesy visit to Governor Yahaya Bello at the government house, Lokoja. They commended the governor for his doggedness, achievement, and infrastructure development across the three senatorial districts of the state. Abubakar promised to support Governor Bello's administration towards achieving the state court confluence of their dreams, hence the synergy to build a united Kogi. They used the occasion to request their four-month salary areas and several benefits all by the administration of Idris Wada. Our reporter has the detail. On behalf of all ex-Governor Wada's appointees was the former Commissioner of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, Abubakar Amoku. Abubakar commended Governor Bello for his all sectors achievements and appointments across the political parties in the state. We must appreciate the complete turnaround in, in several sectors of the state on Diabolosh. <laughs> Honestly, the first flyover in this state, water to foot top, by your pragmatic and quality leadership, has improved the rating of local in The referral hospital in Guinea, yeah. and of course, yeah. establishment of two sectors of education yeah. in these states, located, I mean, the Conference University of Science and Technology, located in Osara, and Kobe State University, located in Canada. <laughs> these are all key enduring legacies that the people of this state will share it in eternity. Mention must also be made of the completion of Ayamba into either rules. No doubt one area you have excelled to your Patient of um, your passion for human development. So many people who never thought they could be appointed into a position of government or for the government authority have found themselves to be, I mean, to be at the driving seat of various. He pointed out the challenges they are facing as he appealed for their unpaid salaries to be cleared before the end of Governor Yaya Bello's tenure. We also, like every other civil servant in the state, we were all the same age. Abubakar promised to support Governor Yaya Bello's administration towards ensuring a resounding victory in the next governorship election. He commended the APC candidate Usma Ododo. I want to sincerely appreciate the, the APC governorship Me, he has met with all sectors of people with me. If you have a candidate that is 
going to an election and having a city governor like uh, the Dogen governor, like uh, Adia, and he's still, he's still on the field. He's still making friends. Honestly, we have to appreciate him, and of course, Governor Yaya Bello commended the appointees forum for giving their best during the previous administration. He said both the past governors, Ibrahim Idris and Idris Wada, are leaders he honored so much. Myself and your boss, and my brother, His Excellency Captain Idris Wada, we have never had any open misunderstanding. I've never had silence with my family. Not once. So also, a former governor, Ibrahim Hindus. All of us will respect ourselves so highly. Because to occupy this office and survive only one day is a lot. We will look for other resources by the grace of God to ensure that each and every one of us, at least to a like extent, is satisfied. Governor Bello said the November 11th election is not all about his administration or the APC candidate Usma Ododo, but for the growth and continued development of the state. He urged all stakeholders and citizens of the state to ensure policies of bitterness and ethnicity. The more we come together, the more peaceful we shall be. The more we come together, the more we can manage our scarce resources. The more we come together, the more we can harness God-given resources, both human and natural resources that God has given to us in these states. We cannot divorce ourselves. The eastern flank, the central, and the west. Whether we like, or not, like it or not, we must all live together in peace. And the area we recognize the better. And I thank God Almighty that all of you have recognized and realized that now. The election that we have ahead it's not all about Ododo. It's not all about GYB. It is not all about winning alone. It is about taking our rightful position as a state in the committee of this Federal Republic of Nigeria. Present at the event is David Zakaria representing the Ida Federal House constituency. He commended the governor for asserting the former appointees forum. It is a demonstration of uh, democracy. At the same time, that is a, a demonstration of a good leadership. I commend Alaji Yaya Hadoza Bello, who opened his door for the former appointee of the past administration to come in. And... Uh, one of the important of this today's meeting is the unity of the state. The unity of the people is the unity of the state. And the unity of the state is the progress of the state. I believe the state is moving forward and we thank God Almighty for even people to accept to come again. We sincerely thank them and appreciate them too. Others who spoke during the visit are Omurihani Otukiti and Oluwa Kayonde. They appealed to Governor Yaya Bello and the next governor to include more women and youth in governance. So some of us are very good. I will not lie to you. What we cannot do will not be. And if we are with you, we are with you. Not that we will come in the morning to you and go to another place at night. And I want to tell you that I don't even have to tell you because you know the of women. So please, and I had the other that I have been These women here are strongly behind you. And we are promising no you that if no women in the next election, it's so glad that yes, this team of people have come.
come to meet with you and giving you their weight. And inshallah, as we rub our back, we rub your back. And you taught it by being gender sensitive. First governor in Nigeria that will have a female as AAC. Governor Bello was honored with an award for his outstanding leadership performance across the state. Over 300 appointees of the former Governor Wada were all present to support Governor Yaya Bello's administration. Faith Abdul Ghaffar reporting for MSC TV. As Kogi State citizens look forward to electing the next governor, supporters of the All Progressive Congress, APC, across the state and beyond have continued to converse for more support for the candidature of Ahmed Usman Ododo and his running mate Joel Salifu Oibo. In Abuja, the Avoid team for Ododo has visited Ebra dominated areas to seek their support and vote for Ododo ahead of November 2023 election. In their various reactions, elders of the communities commended Governor Yahaya Bello for the transformation of the state and many infrastructure delivered to the people, including the establishment of universities in the central and western central district to level up with the ones in the eastern flank and other projects. They pointed out that the security challenge has drastically reduced across the state and assured of their full support of the Ododo agenda. Leaders of the Avoid team for Ododo in Abuja, Murutala Sheidu Andas and Ali Musa, who visited Kabusa, Galadimara and Lokongoma areas in Abuja, have assured Kogai that Ahmed Usman Ododo will not only continue where the present administration will stop, but will surpass the good works already established. Murutala urged those who have their PVCs registered outside Kogi to transfer to the state to enable them to vote appropriately. He also advised those who already have theirs registered in Kogi to begin to make plans to be in the conference state on a few days before November 11th, noting that plans are on to convey them home to perform their franchise. They urged the leader of Avoid Team for Ododo, who also doubles as the senior special assistant to the governor on electronic media, Avoid Unwogu, to inform Ododo of their challenge, which was tied to the hardship orchestrated by the removal of fuel subsidy. They seek the movement of electorate from Abuja to Kenya a day to election as palliative to reduce the burden of paying high costs for transportation. The Avoid Team for Ododo is a political support group for the election of the next governor of Kogi State. We go on a short break now. We'll be right back. Malakai TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV. Written everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. On crimes, operative of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, have arrested a lucky based artist manager and his equally businessman accomplice who specialized in distributing illicit drugs to phone seekers at VIP nightclubs and lounge in Lekki and Island Aziz of Lagos State. NDLEA spokesman Femi Baba Femi confirmed that the suspects were arrested following an intelligence about a shipment of Colorado, a synthetic strong strain of cannabis sent to them from Los Angeles, United States. Oseni Ayodeji Babatunde was the first suspect to be arrested during preliminary interview with him. He confessed he started the illicit trade three years ago and has been selling to patrons of clubs and lounges in Lakey and Lagos Island. Oseni said that beside the drug business, he also organized shows for artists around Lagos and outside Nigeria. 
A profile of 10 parcels of Colorado weighing 2.50 kg concealed inside large tins of coffee and duvets linked to Oseni were intercepted by NDLEA operatives at the Mulitara Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja. During a follow-up search of his residence, operatives recovered some quantities of the same substance, a digital weighing scale, and other paraphernalia. The second suspect, an Ikoi-based businessman, Madi Kingsley Ikena, also linked to the shipment, was away in South Africa when the consignment arrived. While operatives maintained surveillance around his 18 Okoti Ebo close Ikoi residence, they also set their drug net for him at the airport. He eventually arrived into the waiting arms of the NDLEA officers on Thursday, 27 July, when he returned to the country on a Kenya Airlines flight at the Lagos airport. Kingsley, in his statement, accepted ownership of a part of the consignment. The Lagos State Police Command said it has arrested no fewer than 88 suspected criminals 24 hours after the launch of Operation Flush. The State Commissioner of Police, Ido Oruwa, disclosed this while speaking with journalists in Ikeja. Oruwa launched Operation Flush to identify trouble spots, especially along construction areas, and flush out criminals, particularly traffic robbers and other miscreants. The CP stated that during the raid, some hard drugs and arms were recovered, stressing that the suspect will be paraded before journalists this week. He said one of the locations of security concern raised included the Orile Igamo area, stressing that the, the current tension in the area was linked to the bridge. On gender-based violence, the commissioner said he has scaled up the unit's capacity since he assumed office. He noted that the gender-based violence sexual abuse and family-related violence remained one of the highest crimes in Lagos State. According to him, it is unfortunate that the crimes are not fully reported because of social cultural factors. The commissioner therefore called on the journalists to be part of forces against crimes. On foreign, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has war is coming back to Russia after a drone attack on the capital Moscow. Zelensky said attacks on Russian territory were an inevitable, natural, and absolutely fair process of the war between the two countries. Russia's defense ministry said three Ukrainian drones were down on Sunday, with two crashing into offices. The Kovo airport southwest of the city center was also briefly shot. The drone attack in the early hours of Sunday is the latest that Moscow has blamed on Kiev. And in a video address on Sunday from the western Ukrainian city of Ivano Frankivsky, Zelensky said that Ukraine was getting stronger. Officials said there were no injuries following Saturday's drone attack, and the city's mayor, Sergei Sobiani, said the facades of two of his buildings were slightly damaged. Let's join Jonah Malik for sports updates. Hello and welcome to Sports Update on MLC TV Global News. The Super Falcons of Nigeria are through to the round of 16 at the ongoing FIFA Women's World Cup. The final group matches for Group B and C were decided on Monday. Japan and Spain qualified from Group C while Australia and Nigeria also go through to the last 16. Here are results so far in Group B. Canada were defeated by Australia by four goals to nothing while Nigeria and Ireland played out a goalless draw. And in Group C, Japan thrashed Spain by four goals to nothing and Costa Rica lost to Zambia three goals to one. Still on sports, Chelsea won the Premier League Summer Series preseason tournament as they beat Fulham two goals to nothing at the FedEx Field in Maryland, Washington, D.C. A 28th minute Thiago Silva header from a Benchiwell corner opened the scoreline. A tap in from Christopher Nkunku just before halftime after good work from Kane Chukwe Mecca sealed the win. It was Nkuku's third goal of preseason following the French striker's £52 million move from RB Leipzig. Fulham did not provide much of an attacking threat, although Kevin Bassi, playing for the first time for the club since his £19 million move from Ajax, headed over from a corner in the second half. 
The victory means Chelsea have won the first Premier League summer series. The preseason tournament also featuring Aston Villa, Brighton, Brentford and Newcastle without losing a game. Earlier in the day, Aston Villa and Brentford played out an entertaining 3 3 draw in the same stadium. As that all on sports update, I am Jonah Malik reporting. Back to Acasta for more stories. Thanks, Jonah. Barbara Owalu has the latest happenings in the world of entertainment. Welcome to Entertainment News. I am Barbara Onwalu. In Africa, Afrobeat is enjoying a speedy accent internationally as Nigerian superstars are reaching millions of listeners across the world, selling out choice venues and winning international awards. In another giant stride for Nigerian music, international megastar and multi platinum seller artist Wizkid sold out the Tertium Stadium in a landmark show. On 29 July 2023, over 60,000 people reportedly turned out to watch the Grammy winner in his first stadium headline show in the United Kingdom. <laughs> The show is one of the stops for Whiskey's tour of his fifth album, More Love, Less Ego, which he dropped in November 2022. Outside the shores of Africa, critics have admitted their surprise at the high quality of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja tattoo film. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Tattoos, Mutant Mayhem, is one of the last releases of the 2023 summer blockbuster season. The Guardian said it was unexpectedly funny, while the Times commented, saying the heroes in a half shell aren't half bad. The Telegraph said, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Tattoo film that's actually good. While the critics predominantly offered three or four star review overall, many said he had exceeded their low expectations. Thanks for watching. I am Barbara Onwalu, reporting for MLC TV. Thanks, Barbara. And that is the size of our package. If you like what we are doing, do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Malakai TV, like and follow our Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, MLC TV Yoruba, and Ibrahabe MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021, Twitter, Malakai TV, and TikTok, Malakai underscore TV. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, and advert placement, or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakai TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It is Malakai TV reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brother's keeper to build a happier and a better society together. I am Joy Moses. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.